You find it's okay to to do a bar crawl as a as a spiritual Christian? Yeah. It's like uh it's like evangelism. Hello and welcome back to the Croak and Crow podcast. Ah. I am Spencer Cardia. I am Grace O'Malley, the pirate queen. Grace O'Malley, Grace O'Malley. Why does that sound so familiar? She's the most famous Irish woman warrior from County Mayo. And this here is Frank, the dopest of dope, who didn't want to show up today. Because today is St. Patrick's Day. St. Patrick's Day. Aaron Gobra. Aaron Gobra and all that. Chad Mifelche. Clug on the Yeah. Um, it's St. Patrick's Day. Mm-hmm. The, the greatest day. Frank didn't want to show up because he wanted to spend his day Frank. drinking green beer. Francis. Good Irish name, Francis. Francis. Good good Catholic boy. Yeah. But um, yeah, it's, it's St. Patrick's Day. I'm sure the Chicago River is green. Yeah. Um, I'm sure. That intersection in East Falls got the shamrock. Every year they, they used to. Yeah. In the middle of the night, a mystery person would... A little leprechaun? Would, a leprechaun spray paints a giant shamrock in the middle of the... Oh, really? Yeah, we used to live over there, but you were a baby. I was a baby. And uh, and then in Ireland, they're probably not doing that much. They do now. <laughs> yeah. They've become Irish American as well. Y'all have on your green. I my green. A- okay. Aaron Express. The, Aaron, the old Aaron Express. If you can't... I have a green hat on. I, I have on eight hats. Eight hats. Lent. A new hat. Every day, podcasting in Lent. I have, an eight, I have on eight hats. Sometimes if you can't find green, but like I said, I have a green hat. The most important thing you do instead of wearing green is never wear orange. Now, what does she mean by that? Because you're like, oh, the Irish flag is green, white, and orange. Well, well, if you talk to some old timers in Ireland, maybe not all in every parts of the north, they'll say, I would never. Sometimes you'll, you might even see them go flags that are green, white, and gold. I grew up with green, white, and gold flags. Now, I'll tell you, then this is a little history lesson. Okay. So, Ireland, obviously, was ruled by England. Yes. Uh, to much of the dismay of the Irish. Just like Ukraine. Just like Ukraine. Um, and so, it was like an iron fist rule. Back in the day, England owned everything. They were the powerhouse. And um, the Irish were not having it. Right. Uh, the Irish were... Or at this point, they, in the very beginning, it was that, like, actual, like, pagan Celtic. Yes. But then what it became was it was a cat. It was St. Patrick. St. Patrick. Uh, Catholic country. The Vietnam. flag was the green flag with the gold harp. Yes. with And so it was a fully Catholic country. And the English were the Protestants. Right. And they did not get along. The English, like, we own you. And it's like, we will never be owned by you. That's when you get the Troubles. Um, the IRA tensions were very high, but you know, with the famine and people dying and there was just no, there was no place for people to have political yes connections. And so in a attempt to say, we live in harmony, there shall be no more fighting. You're not supposed to roll your <laughs> eyes. Um, the Irish flag was made and what it represents is the green being the Irish, Ca- yeah, the, the, the Irish Catholic the orange being the Anglo-Saxon Protestants okay. by English rule, and the white is the peace. Where they come together. Where they come together. And citizens of Ireland are strongly discouraged from ever putting the flag as green, white, and gold. Yes. They think it's very mean to the minority Protestants. Yes. But you do with that information what you want, because today is St. Patrick's yeah. Day. A holiday for everyone to celebrate. I don't mind the Protestants, um, but I, <laughs> there's no but. I don't mind them. I was, uh, you know. Yeah. Well, no. I literally didn't know growing up, I had no idea. All flags had stripes and colors. So yeah. I had no idea why it was, it was. I'm sure most people don't. Why we were, we were all like, we were always told it was green, white, and gold. Yes. Orange always struck me like, why is it orange? I don't get it. Um, but yeah, you can, you can, um, and I guess I guess the oldest flag, the green one with the gold harp, that might be frowned upon as we frown upon earlier flags as that you're trying to say something about it. Mm. You know, like you're you're being um not racist. What do you call someone who doesn't like a religion? Um I don't know. Yeah. 
But exclude. <clears throat> and then, but the, so the the one little more more confusing thing about it is, um, you know, for like it, it, it's it, I feel like to make it so religion based, there was also the element of just England as a occupying country, right? And then it was like. What was different about them? Because you know, in the you know, that Western Europe, right, everyone is kind of similar. It's like, oh, well, we have different beliefs because we're Protestant and Catholic. But would they like them if it was a uh, a overseeing country that was also Catholic? Probably right. still not. You know what I mean? So yeah. there was there was that idea of territory and that um that you Ru- Russia Ukraine where it's like right. you're both Slavic countries, right. but. We don't believe what you believe in. You don't believe what we believe in. Right. Um, and, you know, these years, you know, the uh, the 20th century, and in, in now, you know, you have the internet and you have social media and you have so much technology connection. Ukrainians, people can see that Russians are just like them and nobody wants war. And, um, but at the time, in the, in the 20th century, there was no internet. So you were just, the Catholics in, in, um, you know, the Republic of Ireland were like, all the Protestants are out to get us and to, you know, give our country over. Yeah. And so it was just this kind of word of mouth thing. But it would be like now, I guess, if the Ukraine, just a portion of it stayed Russia, but they're connected. Well, that's right? what I mean. Is that yeah. not what uh, Crimea is? I don't know. Yeah. Well, I remember in 2014, Russia took Crimea and then it was like, and then even those like battling states. There is a lot of parallels to, like, not na- currently because it's yeah. like everything's sort of, but like, especially during the troubles and stuff, right? With those, um, with Donbass and another place in Ukraine where, okay, <clears throat> even before this all started, that was constantly being fought in there because it was like it was Ukrainian territory, but Russia was like, we think we own it, and right, and so that was obviously Northern Ireland where a lot of that problems were. And so it ends up whether they still own that in Ireland. Eh, who cares? Right. So I love my 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 Protestant Irish cousins, brothers, sisters, and um, fellow countrymen. Now do you love the English? I love the English, sure. The Scottish, the Welsh. The Scottish, not so much. Now, the Scottish, uh, a few years ago, they were given their chance to be independent. Yeah. Just like uh, Mel Gibson would have wanted. <laughs> <laughs> William Wallace. And they said no. We're gonna we're gonna keep this. Well, didn't isn't that isn't that our Puerto Rico? What wasn't Puerto Rico also given a chance? And they said no. I think it's a little different. Is it? Yeah, I'm I sure. just throw out things like how about this, how about that, but I really don't know. Now my question is: Do you think if they gave the same chance to Northern Ireland, like I don't really don't know the political place in Northern Ireland, like? Do most of them just consider themselves English? I think so, yeah. And they prefer it? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Interesting. Then why don't you go cross the lake? I don't know. I'm confused about so much. (laughs) So much um, politics and um, I don't want to say geography, but I don't think that's it. You know, like the other day, the the royal family's website, Instagram, whatever, they were wishing a happy Commonwealth Day. Happy Commonwealth Day to the Commonwealth and... They had all the flags on there that are in the Commonwealth. Yeah. They had Canada on there. They had Trinidad on there. And I'm like, what the heck's the Commonwealth? Because I know Trinidad used to be under England and now they're now they're now they're a republic. But, but Canada's always been on their or been on their own, but they still have okay. like the queen the on connect, the money. A connection, yeah. I don't know why. Right, okay. But is it just like I don't know. I don't know, but we missed it. So happy Commonwealth Day. Happy Commonwealth. Is it today? <laughs> no, I think it was. Oh. Well, <laughs> if you celebrate Commonwealth it, I Day. Didn't, I didn't get it. Enjoy yourself. But yeah, St. Patty's Day, St. Patrick, uh, great missionary. Um, his story, though, do you know about it? It's a of course weird. I know about it, but do I know about it? Like, 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 Who I, knows? You, you know, yeah, he, he went and drove all the snakes out of Ireland. Yeah. But... It's like he was taken there as a slave or something. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Um, history, history is uh, you can't believe anything you read. And also, if, if I feel people, if you get too, too worried about, it, I mean, of course you have to know history so it won't repeat itself. But also, like, live, live the live the present day, you know. Yeah, and also, um, we've said this before about uh things. It's like if you dive into history so much, it's like, is it worth it 
Right. There is, there, like you said, this is important knowledge to know the actual facts, but especially if, if things are good, mm-hmm. is it worth going back and polluting it with the truth almost? Where it's like, yeah, is not what we're celebrating what matters and really not exactly what happened? Right. I don't know. Yeah. So everyone's Irish today, unless except for the people who don't want to be. <clears throat> no, they are too. I also grew up, you know, with the kiss me on Irish thing. I think we talked about this last year. Yeah. And it's it, now it's frowned upon. It's frowned upon. Yeah. It's a shame. And it's funny, too, because I don't really find the Irish to be kissers. So why no. that started, I don't even know. It is strange, isn't it? <laughs> the Irish are more reserved and kind of like, don't touch me. Yeah. That's like, would be more of an Italian thing. Yeah. Right? Like, what oh, did, you know what? what I did, bet the Italians started it. The Italians probably started it in New York. Damn Italians. Right? So the <laughs> Irish started the Irish parade in New York. Yeah. That, no. St. Augustine was the oldest. Oh. And it's like, oh. New York. Right. They're Irish. Gives so me. Every, yeah, the Irish were like, yay, celebrating. We're Irish, Irish. Hello, hello. And the Italians were like, kiss me, I'm Irish. They were tricking. I knew it. I knew it. Come what here it, for your facts. What did Cuomo <laughs> say? It's like, I'm not perverted. I'm Italian. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. Yeah. Right. So that's, um, you, learn, you learned it here first. You learned it here first. And, right here. And the most the truthful. That was started by um, Italians. Yes. That was, started by, that was started by Italians. They wanted to get in on it. Yeah. I think the Ukraine Russia conflict was terrified. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? Everything. Everything. No, we're just kidding. We're just joking around because it's a Thursday. And actually, that's the day we don't joke around because we get real serious into the Bible. There's lots of funny stories in the Bible. Name one. Um, when Mordecai was brought out in all the king's um, finery on the horse. And that's pretty funny. That was pretty funny. Right? Fun yeah. and funny. Happy Purim. Happy Purim. It was yesterday. Hope no, it's ever- today. It's, I believe it was sundown yesterday to sundown today. Oh. Yeah. Well, happy Purim today. Yeah. They'll give poor people money and other people two kinds of food. <laughs> I know how to celebrate. That's right. And we can eat our Irish food. Irish food. Uh, what's your favorite Irish food? Let me guess. Uh, cabbage and potatoes. Um, cabbage and, and stew. I'll take stew. Yeah. Irish stew. Yeah. I'll take, well, I take, uh, a shepherd's pie is more English, right? Ooh, it could be, it could be Irish as could well. Could be Irish? Yeah. I'll take it then. Okay. Northern Ireland, I'll, I'll use the, the orange and the flag. I'll have shepherd's pie. Okay. Thank you very much. But, Bring it uh, out. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it'll be like Purim. Where's, where, yes. why are we not getting dropped off? We need more Jewish neighbors. Yeah, we do. Um. Actually, I think we have a lot of Jewish neighbors. We do. We used to. We did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyway, people 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 get old and new people come in. Out with the old and with the new. That's what I say. But where'd your shirt come from? This is the Aaron Express. Oh, I thought you were gonna show off your butt. You're not really in it, but okay. No, I'm not. Oh, I'm not even showing the words. <laughs> There's the words. Yeah. I knew you wanted to show your butt. That's why. Luckily, I'm not wearing my little shorts today. Yeah. Um, Aaron Express, Northeast Philly thing. Um, just a little bar crawl, but um, it's fun. It's uh, it's your Philadelphia is very, especially the Northeast section now, has always been very Irish. Yeah. And so, it's um, a lot of people get really into it. Obviously, Amer- Irish American love St. Patty's Day a lot, but there's all like there's so many of these like. like is authentic the word? Like Irish pubs. Okay. In Philadelphia. In, in Philadelphia, especially the Northeast. That are like, you know, owned and operated by people from overseas. So it's cool. It, it's not like... So what happens? So it's just, um, you just go and hang out with a bunch of other people. And um, they have school buses that are just riding around to like 10 locations. Okay. So you're being shuttled from Irish bar to Irish bar to Irish bar. Yes. And... um. Like you can just get on and off, or like yeah. it's a tour. No, it's they're constantly rotating. Okay. So like every thirty minutes. That is or so. fun. Yeah, it's it's fun, and it's just like the, the moving around. There's so many people. Yeah. It's a it's a big social event. Everyone's wearing their green. You should have got pictures for us. Yeah, you know I'm just a little self conscious nowadays. Well, you shouldn't be. Well, then we have. Well, yesterday we had a live about shame. Yeah, that's right. And uh, I should have no shame no. in the way I look. No. My hideous frame you find it's okay to to do a bar crawl as a 
as a spiritual Christian? Yeah. It's like uh it's like evangelism. I'm not saying it's not. I was just I always ask questions that maybe the audience had. No, I think I think it's it's it's, it's fine. Um I think and also I mean like hmm anywhere there's you know uh there's multiple people. I I think it's great to be around people. Uh and especially if if you're for the for the right reasons being socialness and and being kind and being friendly with yes. people it's like yes it, it it regenerates your soul and yes. the more people you can deal with we, we always outreach talk about this. happens everywhere yeah outreach happens everywhere and even on a not a scale of yeah every place i was on my soapbox saying let me tell you no i don't mean that i just meant like being with your fellow humanity yeah you know? being with your fellow humanity and just enjoying the life that god gave us yeah and um it gives you the opportunity to, like, uh, how do I put this? Like, I feel like religion and stuff, it, there's so much based on other people. Like, mm-hmm. spiritual reflection is good, you know, like isolating yourself and learning and doing your Bible reading. But when you really are put putting Christian values into practice, always involves other people. Yeah. You know, like, it's like your relationship with God. And now, what do you do with that? Right. You spread your love and kindness to yeah. everyone else. If, if it's all about love, you know, okay, I'm in my room. I love myself. It's like, go around, be out, be around people yeah. and, and let, let them see you as the cup that's runneth, runneth thing over. Yes. And you're, you yeah, are, yeah. everyone wants to be around you. Why could mm-hmm. you have so much love in you? Where's, where's that from? Oh, he's, he's a really into Christian, Christian. Yeah. Um, and as we s- said yesterday, Purim, a part of it is alcoholic beverages. But some <laughs> people just feel you know, um, you have real conservative Christians who who hear the word, you know, uh, alcohol, and it's like yeah. you, you're sinning. Or if you hear um, even our movie or something yeah. like that. But well, I yeah, th- I mean, don't don't get me wrong. There is like earthly play. Like I feel like there is a difference of saying something's good and saying something's bad. And I don't think it's so black and white. Yeah. And so, is any earthly pleasures? Um, was it called like can they be, like, be a distraction almost mm-hmm. and yeah and, and especially when you involve alcohol like in Purim, uh you know, can bad decisions be made can things that you wouldn't do as a normal spiritual person right. happen absolutely and and it's like it's all about that that navigating herself on this earthly world you know what i mean like yeah um and so we we are put on this life with all of these Earthly pleasure is not to say, don't do this. Yes. Stay away from it. But to say, live in har- like live in harmony of, of experience this earthly life. Yeah. Choose good. Choose the right thing over the bad thing. You have everything in front of you. Right. And it's like, like use, you know, like uh, Hunger Games. Mm-hmm. When like in, in the middle, they just have all the tools out there. It's like, that's what it is. It's, this is your earth. Like you have everything. And now the hope is that. You find your relationship yeah. with God. Yeah, I, I was thinking of um. Uh, we'll have to get to this. I was thinking of the the wedding, the wedding um at Can- Canaan, Canaan, Cana? <clears throat> the one with the uh, water to the wine. With the water to the wine. So everyone knows, not everyone, but mostly probably people watching our show. I, I can't hear because all these hats. <laughs> um, they're soft, but they're they're very uh noise canceling. Um. The people know the story where Jesus turns the water to wine, but I'm put in mind because you just said I didn't go around to the to the Aaron Express and um you know get on a soapbox at every bar and be like yeah. who wants to hear the scripture, <laughs> um Jesus at the wedding he was being a a guest he was being quiet yeah. he was sitting there and and um when Mary said to him you have to help them you know and he and he said it's like it's not time woman yeah um interesting Jesus. Christ, who came to earth to the, the ultimate prophet yeah. to talk to the people and um, give everybody the information. He was like, I'm just at the wedding. Yeah. I'm just here to have a good time and to celebrate these people. So you did not need to um, bring your Bible to, to the Aaron Express with you. Although it pro- that's pretty Irish, actually. <laughs> uh, that would be pretty Irish, wouldn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, guys, we're, we're getting a little distracted because yeah. it's our favorite day of the year, but it's also my favorite day of the week. All my favorite day of the year. Whoa, this is my favorite day ever? Because <laughs> it is Thursday, and you know that's my favorite day. It's March 17th. For people who don't know, that um, 
St. Patrick's Day is always on March 17th. Always. Oh, happy so, birthday, Megan. Happy birthday, Megan. So, yeah, so this is like uh, the ultimate day because it's Thursday and it's St. Patrick's Day. But on Thursday, besides St. Patrick's Day, every week we do something called Walk Through walk Thursday. Through Thursday. Let's walk through Thursday. Okay. Now All let's right. do the Irish jig through Thursday. What? I said, let's do the Irish jig through, thir- through Thursday. Welcome back. Hope you're having fun. Cuz walk through Wednesday just begun. What is up, guys? It is walk through Thursday, the greatest day of the year. Mm-hmm. What do we do on walk through Thursday? I'll tell you. We open up the Bible. Bible's open. And once the Bible's open, we- I really just kissed my microphone. There. <laughs> once the Bible's open. <laughs> Once the Bible's open, we pick a verse. Pick a verse out of the Bible. Anyone. Pick a verse, any verse. I don't need to know it yet. And we break it down. Instead of getting an entire meaning of a story, we get a little verse. And we try to find the spiritual significance in it. What it means to us today. Today on the St. Patrick's Day. And it might mean something else to you. The Bible's a living word. So it's 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 there to to spark meaning in our own lives yes it's not a history book well it is technically a book of (laughs) of history but it's not a this is what happened it's a a book that we can always look at and say what is this what does this mean for me today right with that being said we're going to get right into it break it down sentence by sentence line by line syllable by syllable word by word letter by letter and all that so today we are reading i don't know We're reading out of the book of Hebrews, Hebrews 6, Okay. Hebrews 6, 16 to 20. Okay. Now, Hebrews, who wrote it? Paul. Paul. <laughs> it is uh, letters to yeah. the Hebrews. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. A series of letters that he was writing to the Hebrews about God and, and Jesus and he, just like uh, St. Patrick, tips, yeah. Paul is a big evangelist. Yes. Drove the snakes out of... Yeah, it's funny you should say Rome. that because um, there was a different... I was going to do Acts, um, Acts of the Apostles, and it was a story of, of, of um, Paul being prisonered on a boat, and he got off the... the he swam to shore, but whatever. He... Mm. There was a fire, and um, a snake came out and grabbed, like, caught him by the hand. Oh, really? And he... I, I think he shook it off or whatever, but the but the people there were like... How did how did he not die? How did he um, you know not get hurt? And how did the snake go away? So Paul did have a little St. Patrick moment there. A little St. Patrick moment, or I guess St. Patrick had a little Paul moment, but <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. not here nor there. All right, so yeah, let's just start reading. So this is all under the heading of the uh, you know when sometimes they give titles yeah. in the new translations, the certainty of God's promise. Okay. People swear by someone greater than themselves. And the oath confirms what is said and puts an end to all argument. Because God wanted to make it the unchanging nature of his purpose very clear to the heirs of what was promised, he confirmed it with an oath. God did this so that by two unchangeable things in which it is impossible for God to lie, we who have fled to take hold of the hope set before us may be greatly encouraged. We have this hope as an anchor for the soul, firm and secure. It enters the inner sanctuary behind the curtain, where our forerunner Jesus has entered on our behalf. He has become a high priest forever in order of the Melchizedek. Melchizedek. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So 19, I think, is the famous quote. People get tattoos. We have this hope as an anchor for the soul. Yeah. And you might just see like hope is the anchor of my soul or Mm. whatever. Maybe it's an anchor. What does that mean? Or anchor and then it says... And then it says Hebrews six nineteen. What does it mean? What? What's it? What are you saying? I'm saying that someone could just get an anchor tattoo. Oh, just an, oh, you know what? They really could, yeah. and then just put that on there. Um, anchors, of course, very well, very Irish, especially where my family is from. Part of half my family, other half I think is more <laughs> north, but um, it, it, like a port, port city, port city. Um, Do you know the authentic Irish sweaters? You see them; they have all the. The knits and the knots. Cable knit, yeah. Cable knit sweaters. Do you know they're actually originally for fishermen? Yes, fisherman sweater. Do you know why? 
They're water- but but they're outside, waterproof. outside of them being warm and waterproof. No. The knits, I mean. like The, the design. The design. What? It was a little morbid. It would you would ha- every family would have a type oh, of knit. Oh, okay. Like the um, the plaid, uh, the tartan in, in Scotland yeah. is also identifiable. Yes, and if you drowned, hmm. you'd be very when they pulled you out unrecognizable. Because oh my gosh, um, look like cabbage head. <laughs> yeah, look like cabbage head. <laughs> but you would be able to be identified by the sweater you're wearing. Ah, so that's sweet. Death sweaters. Death sweaters. <laughs> Deathsweaters.com. Um, yeah, Anchor's a, a very um, a very Irish thing. It's an island. Ireland's an island. The and Emerald the Isle. Irish sea, sea and Atlantic Ocean. Yeah, Atlantic Ocean, because you can go across Canada and hit Ireland. Yeah. I always, uh, whenever I get confused of Atlantic and Pacific, I'm like, Atlantic City is on our side. Oh, that's so funny. Yeah. Um. Okay, so should we, should we walk through it? Should we run through it? You should, you should, um, <clears throat> river dance through it. People swear by someone greater than themselves, and the oath confirms what is said and puts an end to all argument. That's, I swear to God. I swear to God. Right? People always say. Yeah. I swear to God. Or the, or if they're, or if they're challenging you, they'll say, do you swear to God? Oh, uh, yeah, because it puts an end to all argument. Yeah. <clears throat> because God wanted to make the unchanging nature of his purpose very cl- clear to the heirs of what was promised he confirmed it with an oath yeah um i think further up but you don't have to go back but mm-hmm. i think when he made a, um the oath or the promise to abraham yeah of course i will surely bless you and give you many descendants right so god can't say i swear to anyone because god is god right he's the oh. highest you can possibly be so instead it's i make this oath to you and it's the same as when we swear on god or swear on the bible oh mm-hmm. that's interesting um <clears throat> god did this so that by two unchangeable things in which it is impossible for god to lie we who have fled to take hold of the hope set before us may be greatly encouraged okay so that's like you know uh when you know, you know when you have these existential thoughts you that, do <laughs> i do you're laying in bed and it's like you're like think so so highly of you know obviously god the creator and it's like unconditional love but then you might be up at night and be like if he created everything he could just stop and get rid of everything yes and i'll be gone out of existence yes this is the, the comfort in that right this is saying like <clears throat> The two unchangeable things is impossible for God to lie. So when, when God make made an oath with Abraham with humanity, uh, I will I will be here for you and all of your descendants. Right. That's the comfort. It's like yes. the same way if someone's like, "Hey, did you make out with my girlfriend?" I'm like, "I swear to God, I didn't." Right. <clears throat> and it's like I mean it because I'm not going to lie on God's name. Yeah. God can't lie, so He did these two things of making an oath and I can't lie, so therefore it is sworn. Right. It's funny you should say, just real quickly, the funny you should say that, that if God made everything, he could take everything away. You know, I'm obsessed with Job. Yeah. And in there, um, it talks about, because Job keeps saying, you hate me. And, you, you know, it's like, I don't have to have any of you. So, yeah. like, just know that, that if I wanted to just destroy everything, I would, and I'm not. So, yeah. stop. Yeah. yeah. Um, we have this hope as an anchor for the soul, firm and secure. It enters the sanctuary behind the curtain. And so, once again, it, it, uh, think of a boat on, on choppy water. Is that not these these night uh, existential crisis thoughts? Yes. That's like, oh, well, it's like, what what is going to happen, blah, blah, blah. It's like, that's the anchor, which is like settled settle in you, is right. this idea that God made an oath. And it's like, he would never you know, turn on his oath the same way I would never turn on right. swearing by his name. Right. <clears throat> where our forerunner Jesus has entered on our behalf, he has become a high priest forever in the order of Melchizedek. Yes. Would you like to take that one? Oh, I don't even know. I just, um, when you were talking, I was like, when did I hear <clears throat> Melchizedek before? And it's part of the communion rite in church. Mm. They say, and the bread and wine offered by our priest Melchizedek. Um, oh, okay. So it just, it's saying the order of Melchizedek. So I'm guessing, um, and this is a guess, but the same way, like Jesus came from David. Yeah. Um, did he also come down a line of Melchizedek? Was Melchizedek a priest, and then yeah. Jesus became 
or is it the just highest priest of all time is it just like the order of like is it like the order of priesthood and like yeah um spiritual governess mm-hmm. and, and jesus is the forerunner of that so where did you go um did you just read where our you're asking me about where our forerunner jesus has entered on our behalf yeah i just yeah so, so i think it's just like and the person to follow like out of the order of the, Mel- <clears throat> the melchizedek jesus is the forerunner to yeah. follow to get all of this did did we did we talk about it enters the inner sanctuary behind the curtain no yeah i i i I was hoping you could help me with that one for a little bit for a minute it enters the inner sanctuary we have this hope as an anchor for the soul firm and secure period new new sentence it enters the inner sanctuary behind the curtain um i believe like the unseen we have no understanding yeah but i also believe that it's referring to the Ark of the Covenant. Oh, okay. Which was, you know, God's commandments, like the holiest thing on earth that was in the, the tabernacle, which was carried around, but it was always in protected. A, a of course, tent, there was rules, yeah. And nobody was allowed into the like the final curtain. Okay. Except for like the highest of the Levites. So this, so our hope is allowed to enter in there. Yes. Mm. Oh. It's clean and clean and nice and and. Yeah, it's like humans. Oh, we can't touch it, but it's yeah. like because you touch it, you die, but. Your soul is allowed. Oh, that's awesome. Well, well good thing we yeah. circled back for that. <laughs> wow. Well, guys, it is St. Patrick's Day, so we need to get out of here. We're going to Ireland. <laughs> Kelly's in Ireland. I know. I think she's in somewhere over there. Oh. Paris, well, but she's close by. Anyway, guys, we'll be back tomorrow for Dr. Seuss Friday. You'll be back. You've taken a couple weeks off vacationing. We'll be back, and um, everyone show up. Go have a fun and safe St. Patty's Day. Um up the up the raw and what is i will have one not nine yeah right yeah three six yeah tomorrow nine. i'll have one nine good luck and yeah this was hard to do um so we'll see what happens but this well, is my bear can you see that it's a bear yeah i wore that once i think yeah, it was I on like a outdoor podcast that's it for us guys peace <laughs>